Welcome back to another PT Pearl from the Altimo Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're going to talk about how you can implement all these crazy little things that PTs go over from core to corrective exercises to strengthening to mobility. How the heck are you supposed to fit that into your day, your life, a month, whatever it may be? We're going to talk it and break it all down with you today. All right, today's topic is going to be kind of fun because I love to tell people to get out of their silo. And what I mean by that is the things that you do the most <laughs> sometimes are not the things that you should just do more of. Mm. And how do we start to layer all of these different components that we might be told by a PT or by a different personal trainer, like mobility exercises or core exercises or HIT? Like, how do we construct that into a good week for ourselves? So first of all, I want to start with, you're not alone in trying to figure this out and what you should be doing on a daily basis. And there's also not one way to do it. And there's not Mm -hmm. one perfect way. I think life is, as we've said before, messy and it's going to ebb and flow. And there's going to be times where you're perfectly implementing some of these things that you know you quote unquote should be. And sometimes when it's maybe not as present. Yeah, life is messy and people are messy and people are different. And each different person is going to need something slightly different. Even maybe at different points in your life, you're going to need things that are different than what worked for you 20 years ago. And so I know in your Optimal Body membership, basically what you end up doing is creating this incredible library of different content for people the more the longer you stay in it and you get different core exercises, mobility flows, HIIT workouts, and muscle activations, which is one of my personal faves, along with different mindset tools and recipes and everything, just to give you all of these tools and be like, okay, now figure out what your body needs. It's so hard for me. Unless you're working with me one-on-one as a patient, I don't like to hold your hand because there's not one way to perfectly do it. And there's not one perfect exercise routine and there's not one perfect thing it's just about exploring and continuing to be willing to explore that was a hard thing when i first launched the optimal body it was just like oh here's all my education do what you want with it you know (laughs) and that's a hard thing and by the way if you have ever considered hopping into it we do have a 50 percent off for your first month code optimal so you just use that at checkout and you can explore what the heck, all of these things that we're going to be talking about. Even as a provider, even if I am seeing you as a patient, I still don't want to hold your hand. I I still don't want you to feel like, oh, I need you to be here so I know exactly how to do every single exercise perfectly. Like we call that paralysis by analysis. Mm -hmm. And that happens to providers and to patients where it's just like you get home and you're like, I don't remember how to do it. Mm -hmm. The the best way to do it is just to do and then to analyze again how you feel after that and then maybe make slight adjustments. And Mm -hmm. it's like my clients just know like you're not going to see me on a consistent basis. So you have to be be willing and able to implement what I provide you and figure out how you're going to add it into your life. And it's been cool to see that in the optimal body as well. And I think people get a really good introduction in this with if they do the 30 day challenge, which is something we've just started implementing. So the 30 day challenge, what people like about it is that I do break it down. Here's what you do on a day to day basis for these 30 days. However, even within that, it's like, hey, if you need this different, do this. If you don't want this, don't do that. So then tell me how often should I do mobility? Because I'm really wondering. (laughs) <laughs> that is the question, though. That's a good... We've talked about this in a previous episode as well, mm-hmm. it, especially when it comes to specific mobility exercises that are needed for your body. When it comes to mobility, it's 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 more about consistency, less about the complexity of it or the intricacies of it all. I mean, obviously, we want to know what's best for our body, yeah. right? However, it's more about how often you're going to implement it. Yeah. I think some of that, again, has to do with what I said at the beginning. Where's your current fitness level? What what are yeah. the current things that you're doing a lot? You know, if, if you're somebody who doesn't do a lot, period, throwing in mobility twice a week is going to really talk to your body. And it's, you're really going to realize, ooh, that flow felt amazing in these areas. 
ooh, that flow was super challenging and starting to just live into the ones that you notice talk to certain areas in your body the most like, oh, I'm a little sore in that area when I woke up after that flow. Good. Your body's responding and saying, ooh, you challenged me a little bit. Like, let's adjust. And the next time that comes around, I'll be more prepared. You know, if you're somebody who's a yogi and doing yoga every day, you might not need to throw in just extra mobility flows on top of that. That's when we're, we're going to go into core or muscle activations or hit workouts that you might want to start sprinkling in more often. I think the mm -hmm. only way you really get to know if your body needs that is this, if you try it, especially in the optimal body, because it's not as specific as the mobility method mm -hmm. for when it comes to mobility. So just try it. If you have five to 10 minutes, take it, see what it feels like. If it felt not much different, you probably don't need that one. If you felt like, ooh, there were some challenging things, you probably can add it in at least to start with twice a week. Yeah. And again, if you're noticing that's like, hmm, I could use a little more assistance there because I'm noticing how it helps me during my weightlifting that I do, yeah. or I'm noticing how it helps me during Pilates or something even. Okay. Throw it in a third day a week or do just one round of it before you do your weightlifting. Um, that's how you can start to learn how to construct when you use your mobility flows. Mm -hmm. Oh, that component of that full body flow felt great on my chest. So I'm going to do that before I bench press. <laughs> exactly. Just recently this year added or last year, I should say added muscle activations, which are essentially like corrective exercises. That's a very popular term, right? That uh, physical therapists or chiropractors or clinicians mm -hmm. will prescribe are these corrective exercises that are meant to help understand how to fire certain muscles, turn off certain ones so that you're not overworking and, and overall just start to feel better. And so what I like to say too, when it comes to these, because we get super detailed in these, they, it, the video is only like three to five minutes long. However, it is really breaking it down and, and the intricacies of what goes on in the body during each of these exercises, which I think is really cool because you get to learn a lot. If you notice that you have, you're experiencing back pain during workout or just on a day-to-day -day basis, like maybe exploring some of these muscle activations around the glutes, around the hamstrings, around the core can be super beneficial. Uh, say you get shoulder pain, neck pain, upper back pain exploring some of the muscle activations that we do around the shoulder blades and around the upper body. Super, can be super beneficial. Mm -hmm. And so, especially when you're experiencing these kind of chronic aches or pains or things that continue to pop up, these muscle activations really have a way of saying, hey, like I'm gonna add this right before I go do my workout. Whatever workout that may be, it doesn't have to be from the ultimate body, right? It could be from anything, but I'm gonna do this three to five minute thing right before I work out. So I have this awareness in my body tapped into in a new way so that when I go to lift heavy loads or, or run or do something different, I have a better awareness in my body. And that's really what mm. it's meant to do. Yeah. These muscle activations are the things that make me shake and make me sweat within that three to five minute video. Like we get to the end of them and I feel like some people are going to be watching saying like, he's got to be faking or he's got to be. No, I call these primers. That's one of my favorite words for muscle activation is primers because they prime my system to connect between the hips and the core and my upper body to get ready to do some higher level movements or some different movements. So, you know, if you're going to be going in and doing some squats or if you're going to be doing a really plank heavy um, activity, doing a couple of these muscle activations to prime the system and get ready is amazing. These progress on each other every single month. And I think that's also what's super cool. We start in these maybe basic things that you've seen before, but in ways that you haven't heard before. Like a plank on your knees. If you think a plank on your elbows and knees is easy, yeah, think again. <laughs> Try the muscle activations. Uh -huh. Or a bridge on the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually an evil laugh. I got a little bit scared right there. <laughs> but it, it's fun because you get to notice so much different things and some people are like I have no idea if I'm doing this right and I'm just like just continue because it's all about just we're, we're bringing different awarenesses we're mm -hmm. just getting to know our body in a different way and so that especially again you you feel like you have imbalances you've been told side to side you may be different add one of these in just one before every workout and then start or before a hike or before a walk or first thing in the morning like mm -hmm. they don't take long 
but they can really help to, to rebalance. Um, and the other one that really helps to rebalance is the core. Core is massive, and this goes, for me, uh, a long, long way as somebody who was compensating through my core in order to make up for my tight hips and my tight upper back and everything that we talked about in the, the mobility episode a few, a few episodes ago. I don't say this in any sort of braggadocious way, but I've just been somebody who's had a six pack my whole life. Very high metabolism and I've always kind of had some definition, but I just realized when I started doing the core one exercises, how bad my coordination was in my mm. core. And that also showed through the pelvic floor issues that I have and miscoordination of my pelvic floor. Uh, again, I go back to my college football days when I was squatting weights that I had no business being on my back, but now I know my core was not activated in the way it should be. Mm. And I think that played a long way into some of the, the pains that I get in my low back. And again, the, the pelvic floor miscoordination that I had. I had bilateral inguinal hernia when I was a junior in high school and so, all to say core one for me generally is the hardest generally makes me think the most mm -hmm. makes my nervous system again shake a little bit and then by the time i get to core four i can really feel like oh wow i'm super glad that i spent a lot of time on doing the core one exercises the basic planks on your knees and elbows the basic heel tap exercises because of how much it really teaches my brain oh this is how we coordinate everything together when we talk about these core workouts in the optimal body it's not like thinking what you see on Instagram for core workouts, right? It's not like your sit-ups and your, and your crazy ab things and throwing balls. Those are all great. Like no, nothing wrong with any of those. We're just connecting in a different way. So when we say core, we're almost saying pillar, <laughs> right? Yeah. We're talking from your shoulder blades all the way down to your pelvic floor, around your rib cage, and then all the way front and back. What is happening? Whether it's in a stable base, whether it's in a rotational movement base, whether it's on your side, whether, you know, we we try all different things in, in the optimal body and we, we explore what core means in your typical Pilates type setting on your back to what it might mean in a plank, to what it might mean if you're only on one arm and two legs, what it might mean if you're rotating and moving. You know, we, we do it all different ways. And so understanding and having this awareness helps to be able to implement when you have kids or you you need to lift heavier kids as they start to age, right? Or you are going to lift heavy weights. You're a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. Understanding this pillar. If you're a runner, you have understanding this, this core integration in your pelvis and your SI and your hips all the way to your legs. How does this work? If any of that sounds like you, implementing this type of core work we do in the in the optimal body at least two times a week can ha start to have just massive changes on how you move. Yeah, and everyone is at a different place again in their core stability, how they coordinate that entire canister and pillar that you were talking about together. But I would just say, no matter what, please just give yourself a few weeks of doing those most basic ones. A lot of people, again, will see those and be like, Psh, easy, yeah. I'm gonna go to the high level plank and do the mountain climbers. And then you continue to have that low back pain and the, the, hip, hip popping. the hip popping that you've had your whole life and just wonder like, I don't know why I keep getting this. Or you do leg raises and you keep having hip popping. And it's like, yeah, it just happens, but I don't know why. Well, again, because every time somebody brings up the basic exercises, you foo-foo them <laughs> and run right past them into the high level stuff because you think that's what a good athlete or an elite athlete should be doing. Trust me, most elite, elite athletes could benefit from going back to the most basic things. What we also have in there are our HIIT workouts. And for some reason that scares a lot of people. What I will say about HIIT workouts, it's something that I've just found that I love so much in my personal life and why I even started with them in the optimal body because it's quick, it's efficient, you don't need a lot of equipment. And my goodness, can you feel it in your body when you're really focusing on everything that's happening. So for me, and, and knowing that I'm trying to affect people. I don't care if you're in a gym or not. I don't care if you have a lot of time, just move. And, yeah. and you could do this anywhere, anytime. That's gonna get your heart pumping. It's gonna get your muscles strong. That's gonna cause hypertrophy. And that's gonna make you feel great. So how do you implement these things in your day? For me, I, I well, <laughs> my easiest to go to is the HIIT workout. 
Mm -hmm. I will say. I love to feel a good sweat. I love to get, whether I'm in person with my friends doing this, and you guys will see this all the time on my stories if you see it, um, or through FaceTime. One, I love working out with other people, which is why I loved when you would do it with me too. Uh, I love the accountability, the support, and I love being able to get something with minimal equipment and feel so amazing. Like I can be so sore the next day. So that's where you kind of what we just talked about with the other stuff are incorporating like that five to 10 minutes of those other components in just prior to doing the HIIT workout. Mm -hmm. And that all in itself might only take 40 minutes. And I love doing a mobility flow in the morning. If I get a mobility flow first thing in the morning, it's an amazing start to my day. Mm. Um, same with core at the end of the day for me, for some reason, just feels so good. Like, like bringing that stability back to my base after being so stressed out during the day or not moving enough or whatever it may be. Core, that is one thing that I know that I can implement more, actually. Something I used to do all the time, right? I taught Pilates for six years. I used to do it all the time but now i'm not doing as much and so that's for me where i get to work yeah and how much your core incorporates the breath that makes sense for me why you'd want to do it before bed because it is it brings you back to the center drops us into that belly into that parasympathetic system a little bit gets us ready to rest and digest all of the food and the crap of the day and clear our body of the toxins we start pumping that lymphatic system I mean, we talk about so much of this in the breath episode mm -hmm. if you want to head back and check that one out episode 11. Yep. Um, so yeah that's just a simple way in which you can coordinate all those components into one neat package throughout the week there you go just a little bit on how you can start to approach all of the crap that gets thrown at you from the fitness community but fit it into what makes sense for you throughout your week, throughout your month, and really to promote consistency throughout life. So check out the Optimal Body Membership if you want. Comment below if you have any questions, subscribe. Let us know what you wanna know because we're gonna be coming at you with more of these.